I've always wondered how those trick candles work. We're here at Jared's birthday party, and we're going to ask the BYU chemistry department to show us the science behind some of the things we encounter every day. As the rest of the team ate some cake and ice cream, I took the opportunity to step into a lab with Dr. Macedoni to discover the chemistry of a trick candle. In order to understand this trick candle, you need to see this next part. Okay. We're going to blow the candle out and I want you to watch what happens. It smokes. Okay. But the smoke is not just smoke, it's actually vaporized wax. So if we blow the candle out and I hold the flame up here, on that smoke, the vaporized wax will relight and it will relight the candle. Crazy. Yeah, have you seen that before? I've never okay. seen this. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Now if we go back to the trick candle, again, the wick itself will actually burn. Okay. Right? Now if you watch the trick candle, the trick candle is going to do something different than the normal candle. As the candle starts to get hotter and hotter at the wick area, it will burn the wax down to the point where some of the magnesium on the outside of that wick is revealed, and when it gets hot enough, it will start to spark. So that when you blow the candle out, it comes back. Keeping in mind that the smoke is vaporized wax, so when it sparks, this, these vapors right here, it's all wax. And so there's the fuel, the spark comes from the magnesium that's wrapped around the wick, and it relights itself. After learning some candle chemistry, I asked Dr. Macedoni if anyone in the department was performing research involving combustion. He directed me to Robert, a chemistry student who's working to improve rocket fuel using some interesting animal proteins. So what kind of research are you guys doing here? Well, right now we're going to test our explosives. So what we've done is we've purified some protein. We've mixed it with this explosive material, and we're going to see how that compares to just standard model rocket explosives. Great. OK, so we'll go ahead and burn this one, and then we'll test the other one. So we just hook up the wires, and then with this controller, we can fire it up. Whoa, cool. Okay, so we had that regular rocket fuel. What do we have now? Right, so now we have the protein. So we've purified the protein, we've mixed it with the propellant, and we're going to see how that compares to the, the model rocket fuel. Great, and that's this, this ferritin right here. That's correct? right. Mm -hmm. Great. So I'm just going to open this up. You just want me to pour this in here. So this research is really interesting, and it seems like it's really applicable to uh, everyday life and to really important things. How would a chemistry graduate or a person majoring in chemistry uh, use this knowledge and use this experience to go into the job field? You know, there are a lot of great jobs for chemists right now. Um, obviously, with something like this, someone could go work for the government, for NASA, or for similar agencies. Um, there's a lot of jobs at universities doing research and teaching. A lot of chemists will also choose to go work for a journal. They can be journal editors. Some chemists will choose to go on to law school where they can become patent lawyers, where we, you could patent a really neat technology like this. The jobs are almost unlimited. There's a lot of really good jobs for chemists right now. Well, we have this modified rocket fuel ready to go, so I'll go ahead and ignite it. Whoa! So that seemed a lot bigger and a little bit faster. Why is that? Yeah, it was noticeably brighter, faster. It was the same quantity of fuel as far as mass, so 50 milligrams. And it just has a lot more energy. Robert's ferritin-laced fuel packed a lot more punch than the first one we tested. Launching real rockets requires careful consideration of how much fuel is needed to catapult a particular amount of weight into space. By using ferritin to produce more energy from the same amount of fuel, we may be able to launch rockets further and with much greater efficiency in the future. Thanks for taking the time to show us a little bit about your research. It was really interesting and I really appreciate it. Yeah, we appreciate you stopping by. Thanks so much. Thanks. 
Hands On is a production of the College of Physical and Mathematical Sciences at Brigham Young University. To get your hands on more information, visit cpms.byu.edu.